So U of L is kicking UK's ass right now, um, which ain't no surprise, to be honest with you. Uh, in, 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 here's how I break it down, okay? I am pro Kentucky, so if Western Kentucky, if Eastern Kentucky, they got a uh, school that actually makes it to the championship, I'm in favor of it. But if U of L and UK get to the championship game, I'm definitely a card fan over UK. And I graduated from U of L, so I got you know that going for. Um, U of L side. U of L also the first ambulance and the first emergency room came out of U of L, so that's also you know uh, a bonus point for the University of Louisville side. But mostly it's because the UK's fans are such dickheads. They're such fucking pricks, you know. I don't get it. I don't get why they're so fucking shitty. Um, especially since U of L, we got Patino. You know, Patino helped get UK several. Several uh, awards. So, I want to read this list real quick. This is uh, sort of the culmination. I got this easy to read list. March 13th, 1997, Robert Whitlow, 45, was murdered by Rodney J. Estace. January 6th, 1998, Rodney Abernathy, murdered uh, by Maurice Hendricks, Fred Helm, and Derek Leachman. Will Willie Williams didn't shoot. January 13th, 1998, a week later, Fidencio Campos crews were murdered by multiple police officers. January 7th, 1999, Adrian Reynolds was murdered by Timothy Barnes and four other unnamed jailers in the basement of cell block 6 of the county jail. Adrian Reynolds' face was smashed into the concrete by Timothy Barnes's boot. One jury stubbornness stopped Barnes from being convicted. Adrian Reynolds' family was awarded $350,000. That's in 1999. May 13, 1999, Desmond Rudolph, 18 year old, was murdered by Chris Horn and Paul Kincaid. $200,000 was paid to the family of Desmond Rudolph. $200,000 for a life. $350,000 for Adrian Reynolds' life. April 11, 2000, Louisville Police Department announced that officers would be required to fill a use of force report every time they charge someone with resisting arrest. May 8, 2000, the Civilian Police Review Board ordinance declared unconstitutional because it had subpoena power. According to Jefferson Circuit Judge Tom McDonald, in June 2000, the Board of Aldermen agreed to appeal the decision against the Civilian Review Board to the Kentucky Court of Appeals. January 9, 2001, Clifford Lewis Jr. was murdered by a mob of wolf packing, plainclothes, viper squad similar to the rogue independent, ungoverned by civilians militia run Louisville right now. Clifford Lewis Jr. was jumped by a wave of white men with guns drawn, at least six thugs who never identified themselves as police. Johann Stanley was the only one charged with a crime. That's 2001. So these these uh, dates are important, okay? So 2001, you had Clifford Lewis Jr. and Antoine D. In 2000, we didn't hear of anything. And in 99, you had Adrian Reynolds and Desmond Rudolph. So Desmond Rudolph is also in the um, the riots, the police riots that happened. So there's some things that was happening. Then in 2001, we got two more young black men who were murdered. Clifford Lewis Jr., um, murdered by Johann Stimley and five or six others. February 2011, Antoine D. Bryant is 20 years old and he's murdered by unnamed LNPD. And uh, that's let's see, August 22nd, 2002, Marshall Marbley murdered by James Coughling, Patty Hannafin, Jefferson Atkins, and Eric Johnson. October 30th, 2002, you had Jason Cravens, a uh, 32-year-old. Murdered by Clayton Patton, December 5, 2002, James Edward Taylor is 50 years old. While he was handcuffed and sitting on a chair, was murdered by Michael O'Neill. January 4, 2004, Michael Newby, 19-year-old, shot three times in the back because of a, quote, drug deal gone bad, which came out of Mackenzie Mattingly's mouth. Mackenzie Mattingly received $60,000 to stay off the police force under Robert White. And 250000 was awarded to Michael Newby's mother to settle a lawsuit. 250000 for a human life. 2008, Obama's elected. Racism in America is over. 
April 21st, 2011, little tiny sickly 45-year-old sickle cell anemic Leon Brackens was murdered by four unidentified Louisville police officers on the Waterson Expressway where Breckenridge Lane intersects it. 26 Louisville public officials are named in the civil lawsuit. So there's, there's a, a number of deaths between 2004 and 1997. There's, you know, about a dozen deaths, and Obama didn't end racism because you still have this little, little tiny, sickly, sickle cell, anemic, 45-year-old Leon Brackens who died April 21st, 2011. So, the, uh, the lynchings continue. The lynchings continue. And, you know, just by these cases, we see lots of, you know, there's, there's lots of things that we see that need to be worked on. And we know why this stuff happens, okay? So, well, l let's look at the, the cases themselves. So, how many of these cases had too many shots, right? How many cases had, like, where the, the, the black per person was just getting shot, like, over a dozen times? Like, how many times do you have to shoot a person to kill them? And, you know, like, uh, Leachman supposedly shot, like, two dozen times at, um, at, at Abernathy, at Rodney Abernathy, two dozen times, two dozen times. And then they didn't even say it was a, the head shot they said that killed him by Mr. Helm. So none of his bullets, they supposedly killed him. He was just that big of a beast. I don't believe it. I'm not buying it. I don't buy it. I, believe, I mean, that's, um, it also makes me think of the, uh, uh, the man, you know, that's in, the, in handcuffs, James Edward Taylor. James Edward Taylor, he's just sitting there and he's, he gets shot about a dozen times. You know, Desmond Rudolph, he shot 20, 22, hit 10 times. He was shot at 22 times. Rodney Abernathy was shot, you know, dozens of times, 15 times was hit. James Edward Taylor, he was shot a number of times. Clifford Lewis Jr. was shot at 13 times, hit seven, three times in the front and four times in the back. So another, an 18-year-old, right, Desmond Rudolph, Clifford Lewis. Marshall Marbley was shot or hit by 16 shots. Michael Newby was shot three times in the back. And really, one shot's too many shots. Like, how do you say what's too many shots? But it's just that when you hear 15 shots, someone getting Rodney Abernathy got hit 15 times. James Edward Taylor got shot, what, 10, 10 or 11 times? And he's sitting in a chair by being handcuffed 11 times, pow, 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 pow. Basically, he just unloads his whole clip in him, right? Pow, 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 click, 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 until you can't shoot no more. You're not shooting somebody to, to stop the threat when you're emptying your clip. You're sh emptying your clip for fun because you're scared, because you can't stop yourself. So the, several of the cases that happened in Louisville were the police had murdered black men, and also the murders when it goes too far, right? So there's no telling how many petty little things, um, you know, that had happened before where, thank goodness, the black person had, you know, acted, um, you know, in, uh, uh, acceptable to the uh, police officer's behavior, to their liking, right? Um, but, I mean, 16 shots, like 16 shots, Marshall Marbley, um, uh, 17 times, you know, Clifford Lewis, uh, uh, at 10 times, Desmond Rudolph. And these guys weren't even doing anything. They were just trying to get away from the police, right? They were trying to leave the police, get away from them. You also got several of the cases had plain clothes. Okay, so the cops are shooting too many times. Don't, yeah, that's murder, okay? When you're shooting, you shoot to stop the threat. If there's no shots at you, you're just murdering somebody. You're just killing somebody. Um, and, and the gun is supposed to be the last thing that you use, right, to stop, you know, the threat. So you have, uh, so, you know, stop, don't, don't shoot so many times. You only need to shoot a few, you know, for the situation, whatever the situation calls for. You don't even, probably don't even need to shoot most of the time one bullet. There's a uh, plain clothes, uh, several other cases, uh, Clifford Lewis Jr. and Michael Newby were both plain clothes. So Clifford Lewis Jr. gets jumped at the White Owl liquor store on Dixie Highway by a bunch of white men, plain clothes, you know, just dressed regular clothes. So it just looks like it could be just a white gang, you know, white gang of thugs with, with guns. And, um, and then Michael Newby was shot, too, by a 
plain clothes all you know also so it just to them it's just a white person walks up to them starts offering them drugs and they reject it and now they're shot dead in the street it's Mackenzie Mattingly so both of them was plain clothes no grand jury indictment for most of them no grand jury indictment Rodney Abernathy, no grand jury indictment. Desmond Rudolph, none. Antoine D. Bryant, none. That was under Stangle. Jason Cravens, Rodden, Robert Whitlow, Fendicio Campos Cruz, James Edward Taylor, Clifford Lewis Jr. None of them had a grand jury indictment. They're going to put me up for indictment, right? I was put up, I was put through a grand jury indictment because I was charged with a felony. I was charged with assaulting a police officer. So for the police brutality issue that I have had at criminal court, and I'm going to have a civil suit coming up, which has been hanging over my head since December 7th, 2012 of last year, for over a year now, I had to go through a grand uh, jury indictment hearing. And what the indictment hearing is, is whether or not to determine there was probable cause that a felony had been committed and actually my lawyers at the time was saying oh yeah you'll probably get it you know you'll probably get that indictment for you and then it depends on from there whether or not it would proceed in district court or um, circuit court so whether or not it would go through like the bigger channels circuit courts like you know murder rape and shit kind of you know some of the bigger fucking crimes out there um, extortion and uh, district courts were, were the smaller ones, so that's all, um, you know, that actually does. It doesn't really stop the process. It doesn't really, you know, um, but evidently it does, because if you don't have the indictment, they, you know, you have the county attorneys who's covering all these cops' asses up by not even allowing the grand jury to, you know, um, no indictment. So I, I, some of these, you know, maybe they just didn't indict the people, but most of them, the, it was never presented to the grand jury. The grand jury never heard about this at all. So if, you know, a person like me, I'm just, I walked to the store and I was crossing, you know, um, uh, two plain clothes, uh, uh, joyriding, you know, fucktards was driving crazily in the, in the middle of the street and they about ran me over as I'm, at the same time as I'm crossing the street and they jumped out at me because they said get the fuck out of the road and I didn't like it so we got into this argument they jumped out at me and I went to swing at him and then uh, I hit him and then they're sitting there telling me they're police and it's like yeah right bullshit you're fucking trying to kick my ass and now you're saying you're the police this is all you know I mean didn't eventually I believed it and I put my hands up and then they you know they punched me in the face so you know basically basically kind of a, a misunderstanding sort of a you know, just a, a shot in the dark, a sort of a lightning bolt, just kind of a boom, you know, here it is, here's the situation. And they did wrong. You know, they pursued, they, they had jumped out, they were the assholes, they were the aggressors. And, um, you know, they, uh, I, they, I got $28,000 in medical bills. So they're going to, you know, they're going to, then I go to jail, right? I go to jail and I get molested. And this is all because they almost ran me over, they're cussing at me. And this is me walking, you know, this, I got jumped in the, in my own backyard by the LMPD. Um, so because I got jumped in, in the backyard because they fucking beat the shit out of me, you know, because I got fucking molested. I got fucking bloodied up. I'm the one that goes to the fucking grand jury. So that just shows you how fucked up Louisville is. If you're a police officer and you gun a person down on the street, pow, pow, pow. You know, if Joel Casey and Aaron Browning would have murdered me that night, which I wouldn't put it past them. They're psychos. They're psychopathic oppressors. Joel Casey said if I would have ran, he wouldn't have chased me. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. I think he would have shot me. I wasn't doing anything to begin with, and they kicked my ass. So if I was running, you're goddamn right. They would have fucking done something. They wanted a piece of me, and that would have like, whoa, then you must have been guilty of something, right? I wasn't guilty of anything, and frankly, they're the fucking ones that was guilty. They're the ones acting like psychos. And they need, to, you know, they need to stop acting like psychos. But essentially, what we're seeing here with the grand jury indictments is the citizen who gets beat up will be forced to go through the grand jury indictment if the cops charge you with a, a felony, with a, you know, assault a police officer that was a felony charge. But if a cop murders you, if you, a cop kills you dead. Down in the street, they don't go through the same process. They're above the law. 
We don't have a democracy where there's a rule of law. We have a plutocracy where the rich people employ these cops as their own personal private security guards not to actually defend us because they get away with murdering us. It's okay to murder us, but if they think that we did something, we're going to get indicted. We'll, get, we'll go through the grand jury, and the grand jury will decide to indict us or not. But if you're the cop, they won't even put you before the grand jury. Murderers are worse than jaywalkers.